This is the bike frame video part 8. In the previous parts we made a bike frame master file and we used that master part file to make individual part files for each of the components of the frame. Each of these components was then put into an assembly file and then brought together to give us the completed bicycle frame assembly. It is this assembly that will be used for drawing that will show how the frame is constructed. However, this assembly does not show the tubing actually welded together or with any graphics on it. We would like to make a version of the frame that has welds where all the tubes join together and also has some graphics added to the sides. It is this version of the frame that will be placed into the top assembly of the bicycle that will include the wheels, the crank set, seat and seat post, and handlebars. To do this, we are going to do something a little bit odd. You'll recall that we started with a master file that contained multiple frame bodies. And then we inserted that master file into new part files in order to create the separate part files for each of the components that make up the frame. Now what we are going to do is take those separate part files and stuff them all back into a single part file all over again, which creates a convenient environment for us to add fillets that look like welds and to add our graphics. We didn't do all of this in our master file because it would have required mitering all the tubes in the master file and adding a lot of additional fillets. Doing it this way gives us a simpler master file. If we look at the feature tree for this part, we see that the first step is simply inserting part file after part file in order to build up the bike frame. That's very simple, but a little bit tedious. This gives us a part file that has a total of nine bodies in the bodies folder. Second step is to combine all these together to create a single body and we see that the bodies folder has disappeared. Then it's a matter of just adding fillets to simulate the welds. Most of these fillets are between about 5 and 10 millimeters in radius. The last steps then are simply to add the graphics, which are nothing more than a sketch on a plane sitting outboard of the frame and the graphics are cut into the surface using the offset from surface option. And then the features and the surfaces are given different colors to create contrast. This is done both on the right side of the frame and on the left side. So let's get started. Go to File, New, Part, OK. And the first thing we will do is go to Insert, part and we will browse to the folder that has all of our frame components. What I'm going to do is just insert these parts one at a time taking them in alphabetical order as shown in my folder. So I will start with the bike bottom bracket shell, open. And I want to make sure that I use the solid bodies but I don't need planes or unabsorbed sketches and I want to uncheck locate part with move copy feature. Then I just hit the green check mark and that places the bottom bracket shell in its proper position in space. Now in the previous video I showed how you can insert multiple parts into an assembly file all at the same time. Unfortunately I have not found a good way to do this when inserting parts into another part file so we have to do it the hard way. So once again insert part We'll pick the next one in line, the brake bridge, open, and green check mark. Here we see it in its proper position. Insert, part, chain stay left, open, that's in its proper position. Insert, part, chain stay right, open, check mark, insert, part, down tube, open and that's in its proper position. I didn't really think you wanted to watch me insert all 12 parts so here is the completed process with 12 bodies now inserted into our part file. 
as we see here in our solid bodies folder. This looks pretty much like the assembly file that we created, but remember that this is actually a part file now with multiple parts inserted into it, creating our 12 bodies. The next step is just to combine these together to create a single body that will allow us to make the fillets at the junctures between the tubes. So selecting the first body in the folder, holding down my shift key and the last one that highlights all the bodies, right click, combine. Make sure add is selected, green check mark. Now we see that the folder for the bodies has disappeared and we have one contiguous part. Now it's just a matter of adding fillets to simulate the welds. I'll zoom up here first and sometimes the order you add the fillets can affect how the welds look so I'll just encourage you to experiment with that. I want to put in some welds between the top and down tubes and the head tube. So choosing fillet, I'll try a fillet of about 10 millimeters and click on this edge here. And that sort of fits in, but it's kind of large. See how that bridges through here. So maybe I'll make that more like six millimeters. That looks a little bit better and finish the fillet. I also need a fillet to bridge between this little gap here or rather intersection, I should say, between the top tube and the down tube. So we'll try another fillet there, and I'll just click on this edge here. We see that that fills in this gap here and carries the fillet into this juncture here. So that looks pretty good. And now we can work toward the rear triangle of the bike. So zooming in this area, we'll try another fillet here. That looks good. And we can, at the same time, add some fillets here and here. And that works out pretty well. You might want to do these as separate fillets in case you have to make them different sizes. We also have a fillet down here for the brake bridge. We need to weld that together. So clicking here and here. And those look pretty good too. Going down to where all the tubes converge at the bottom bracket shell, we have a little more of a complicated situation. And here's where playing around with different fillet sizes and the order of the fillets might be necessary. So I'll again, try with a six millimeter fillet. And I'll try just going with this juncture first and stopping there and then adding another fillet, taking advantage of the fact that this line now is joined to this edge through a tangent fillet. I'll just click on this edge. And that automatically adds this fillet going around this path. Now I can try to add a fillet here where the chainstay joins bottom bracket shell. So I'll click this edge here and come over here and click on this edge. I've re-centered this view so we can see both fillets in preview. We can see how those are automatically working their way around all the edges where the stays join the bottom bracket shell and even partially intersect with the fillet weld on the seat tube. So now we hit our green check mark and you see we've got some pretty complicated looking welds here. By changing the order around you might get something that looks a little bit simpler but If you were to turn off your edges to do a rendering, it actually looks pretty good. The last place we theoretically need to weld is where the dropout plate meets the seat stay and the chain stay. I've never really found a great way to do that for this project, so I've just sort of left it alone. You could try a few things, such as what I'm about to show you here. I will click on this end surface of the chain stay make a new sketch, and since I've got that surface still highlighted, I'll just say offset entities. I'll make that about one millimeter. And I will do an extrusion, mid-plane, just make this about six millimeters. And I will unmerge this check mark. Now I can add some big fillets 
to the end faces here. Help, nope, not that big. Make that about three and make that about three. Finish that. And I can join or rather combine this body to the frame and that will look like a weld going all around the seam. If you're a student in my class, you don't actually have to do this, but it might give you a slightly more realistic looking frame. So let's just see how that looks. Insert feature combine, and we will just combine this with this. And there's our little weld. Of course, what we would want to do before combining this is to make a mirror image of this body for this side, and also do the same process here and here, and then combine everything all at one time. So now it's time to add some graphics to our frame. The graphics could be just some simple stripes or swooshes or something like that. Or in my case, what I'm going to do is actually add some text. To do this, regardless of what the graphics are, what we want to do is have a plane that is outboard of the frame. On these outboard planes, we can sketch the graphics and then do an extruded cut using the offset from surface feature. So choosing my front plane, making a new plane, I will offset one plane about 100 millimeters going in this direction. And again, choosing my front plane, I will offset a plane going 100 millimeters in the opposite direction. On this plane, I will sketch my graphics for the right side of the frame. When I add text, I like to have a line to anchor the text to. In my case, I want the text to follow the arc of the down tube. So I will click on this tangent edge of the down tube, and do an offset entities on that, and I will make that about 10 millimeters. Now I can click on that, go to text, and just add whatever I want. So I will add the name of the famous Jammin' Cyclery to this. And I will choose my own font. Maybe make this Gil Sands bold. And I will make this a much taller font, about 20 millimeters, and see what happens. And we can see that this is probably a little bit too big and it's also way down here. So I can go back to my font, select something that's about 15 millimeters, and let's try taking this out of bold but making it italic. That looks a little better, and then I can play around with the text a little bit. I can stretch this out, and I can add a little bit of spacing between the letters. Now I want to make this line that the text is attached to a construction line. And I obviously don't want the text to be way down here. If I double click on the text again, we see that right now it is in the left align mode. We see the spline that we've attached the text to. And if we want to leave it in left alignment mode, we need to get this endpoint of the spline a lot higher up here to drag the text higher up as well. So let's just try to grab the end of that spline and drag this to somewhere about where we want our text to begin. Now we see that that pulls the beginning of the text up to where the beginning of the spline is. If we want, we can always add a dimension to that so that we can control that parametrically. Let's make that about 275. That looks pretty good. And let's see if this fits in okay. So we seem to have enough room for the text and enough space underneath for the descenders. So that looks pretty good. We see this outboard of our frame and now we can do a cut into this surface. We will use the offset from surface option. And if we offset one way, 
it is coming away from the surface, offset the other goes into the surface. So I will reverse the offset. And we just want to barely go into the surface. We are just trying to give the impression of a color change on the surface, not an actual cut into it. So I'm going to only go in about 0.01 millimeters and hit my check mark. Here we have our graphic cut into the side of the frame. Let me hide my planes. And at this point, we should be deciding what color we want our frame to actually be. My example file has it red, so I will just right click, go to my appearances, part, and I will just choose a nice bright red for that. And of course, the graphic here is also red at the moment. I can override that by applying a color to the feature that made the graphic. That's this cut here. So right click, Appearances. We see that the part has been colored red. We have the body, and here we have the cut extrude that we want to change the color on. So we will check that, and I will make this graphic white to give a high contrast. If I want to further change the color of this, for example, making the J yellow, I have to choose the surfaces that make the J and change the color of those. So changing the color of a surface overrides the color of a feature, and changing the color of a feature overrides the color of a body or the overall part. So right-clicking on the J, going to Appearances, this time we will choose face, which will override the cut, and I will make this yellow. And I will do the same with the dot. Right click, appearances, face, and choose yellow. And that gives me the graphics that I'm looking for. If I open up this double arrow, I see that white has been applied to the cut but unfortunately there is no convenient way of seeing what color has been applied to this face. We also see at the top here that red has been applied to the overall part. The process for adding the graphic on the left side of the frame is exactly the same, only this time you will use the second plane that was made on this side of the frame and again do a cut using the offset from surface option but in this case, you will be cutting into this surface. Of course, you are not limited to putting graphics on just the down tube. You could put them on the top tube instead or any of the other tubes. And you can do it on more than one tube if you like. So this concludes the part eight video and the construction of your bicycle frame.